It's very dramatic music. It's, it's inspired by the political situation of the day, the, the social situation of the early 30s. You know, he, he lived in Italy in his life. He loved Italy. Mussolini had risen to power. Hitler was rising to power in, in, in Germany. We had Stalin in Russia. This tectonic shift underlaid everything that was being created in the arts in the 30s and the 20s. And he was in love. And then he fell out of love. And so it's a tumultuous piece and you hear that in everything. But I think when, when we approach uh, Walton's symphony, I think uh, certain things become clear very quickly. First of all, uh, he has a, a wonderful orchestral palette. He, he really knows how to make a symphony orchestra sound like a virtuosic instrument. You know, there's the, the presto with, with, with malice because he was in this relationship with the broke up. He was angry with a woman basically when he wrote it. And uh, he, he manages in each of the, the movements to, to show the symphony orchestra really in all its, its glory. You know, pretty much everybody's playing all the time throughout the symphony, it's quite amazing. He wrote music for Laurence Olivier films, um, and the suites of which are still played today. So you can go and hear those pieces and you say, hey, that sounds like John Williams later, it sounds like sort of Superman-esque stuff. And, and that's for good reason, it's because the music is so effective, so virtuosic and so uh, clearly coloured, that the, the great film composers of later, like John Williams, they went back to Walton and studied his music and, and took some ideas out. It's very well crafted uh, symphonic music. It, he, he uses very little material to create each of his movements. This is something that Sibelius, of course, did. It's something that Beethoven is, of course, famous for. And there are these, these comments about Sibelius uh, saying that he was the first composer to truly think in symphonic form since Beethoven. Comparing the Walton and, and the Seventh Symphony of Sibelius is, is an interesting process because where one takes a very small amount of material and maximizes it, which is the Walton, he makes, you know, the first movement is 15 minutes long out of just these little cells of ideas and everything is related to it. Sibelius has gone through the opposite process in the Seventh Symphony. Um, it's a, it's a piece that, on the one hand, feels like it contains a universe. You hear it, it's 22 minutes long, but you feel like you've just experienced a journey of enormous difficulty, an, an enormous challenge. And at the same time, the symphony is over like that. It's, a, it's an incredible creation. But what he's done is he's, he's molded into one incredibly compact unit all the happenings of a symphony. So we begin uh, with this elusive, uh, dark, shadowy, two-bar introduction. And as is typical for Sibelius, there's no verticality. He deliberately makes it sound like people are kind of not together, like we're searching for something that we can't grasp, you know, like mist. Um, and then we reach the, the, the most astonishing thing, the, which is the last kind of three pages of the score of the music, maybe, maybe 30, 40 bars, which are so unbelievably painful. And then there's this, this coup at the end where in the last three measures he grasps for C major, trying to get back to C major. And you'll hear, as, as, as audience or as listeners, you'll hear these chords kind of clashing against each other, trying to resolve, trying to resolve. And just in the moment where the strings finally reach the C natural, he just goes and stops. And where maybe another composer, maybe Walton, maybe at the time, would have said, C major, we're here, and you'd have a long fermata. He deliberately avoids that. He makes it a very short last note that just disappears. And it makes it, as a, as a, as a performer, an audience member, you'll say, no, but we just got there. We just saw the light, you know? which makes it all the more tragic. Um, but it's, a, it, it's that, it's a, it's a desperately fulfilling and incredibly tragic symphony. <laughs>